Hey y'all, welcome back to my shop. Are y'all interested in adding threads to some of your projects like this acorn? But, you may not be interested in learning how to use these hand thread chasers. And I use the analogy that uh, using hand thread chasers uh, is a little bit like playing a musical instrument, whereas using a threading jig is a little bit more like, say, uh, downloading music to our, our smartphone. It may take us a little bit of effort to learn how to do it, but once we do it, it's real, it's real simple. So, what I want to do in this video is, is tell you a little bit about threading jigs in general and, and show you some of the pros and cons to, to help you work through that make or buy decision. A threading jig like, like this can be pricey, and that's why you, many of y'all are going to look at the uh, possibility of making one. And yes, it is possible. This is one I actually made, oh, about four years ago when I published an article in American Wood Turing, April 2013 edition, on how to go about making a threading jig. And let me at least explain, start off with explaining what some of the components are. There's basically four components to, to a threading jig. You can download that article from my blog site, and I'll have a link in the description underneath this, uh, this video. Uh, let's talk about the four components. First, uh, first component we've got is the 60 degree rotary cutter mounted in either a collet chuck or mounted in a 3 8 inch, uh, inch collet with a drawbar. Both, both work, depends on what you, what you have. Uh, the next component is going to be the lead screw, and that's the screw that dictates how many threads per inch you're cutting because the threads per inch you're cutting are, is going to match this lead screw. So if this is a 16 threads per inch screw, your threads that you cut are going to be 16 threads per inch. And here's the, here's the lead screw on a, on a commercial jig. The next component is what I call the cross slide vise. And that's the part that moves the jig laterally so it moves the, the workpiece into the, into the cutter. Uh, there are several, uh, when you make one, this is used as a quarter inch coarse rod. I put a, a uh, calibration on it. I printed out this thing in Excel and sized it so it would come out to exactly the number of gradations that this, this has, which is uh, 50. Uh, commercial ones may be calibrated uh, slightly differently. They may have a, a little witness mark. They may have several witness marks. Um, they may have a, a detent where it clicks when you turn it. Uh, but they'll, the commercial ones will all be uh, calibrated to help you move that, uh, the workpiece into the cutter it, to the appropriate thread depth, whether it's an inside thread or an outside thread. The last part of the component is simply the base and it's what holds everything together. Uh, this one I made which is roughly approximates the uh, either the Baxter Threadmaster or the Bonnie Klein. It mounts between the bedways and clamps down. Uh, this one that from Chefware uh, Kits uh, operates a little bit, little bit differently. It operates on the banjo post and the uh, Simon Hope jig operates uh, very, very similarly. And then you just line it up visually uh, square, whereas this one is already square by virtue of fitting within the uh, confines of your uh, bedway. Now this shop made uh, jig that I made, uh, the lead screw is basically made from off the shelf items uh, using a commercially obtained coarse rod frequently found in a hardware store or uh, a big box store. You may have to order it from some site like MS, MSC. Typically, if this is a three-quarter qu inch rod, you could use other sizes, but the advantage of using three-quarter inch rod is they come in two different threads per inch with the say, same three-quarter inch. There's 10 threads per inch, and you can get 16 threads per inch with appropriate sized uh, uh, nuts that go with it. Now, the advantage of that is you can easily uh, buy a a spindle adapter to convert your chuck to allow your chuck to mount on this. Now another solution if you're using a one inch by eight inch uh, chuck you could buy one, one inch by eight inch bar but it's considerably more more expensive. These spindle adapters from Penn State are, are fairly inexpensive and I guess they must have been sized to fit some of the older uh, shop made uh, 
lathes such as the uh, a craftsman or possibly a, a shopsmith. So you can get a spindle adapter that mounts on a three-quarter 16 threads per inch and a spindle adapter that fits on a three-quarter inch 10 threads per inch. Now the challenge of these, uh, making one of these things, uh, that's the first challenge and that was easily overcome by buying a spindle adapter. The second one is getting this to run true, truly concentric as you turn this thing around. And you know, it's backed up against this, this thread, uh, this threaded nut, but it has not necessarily been pro machined and this coarse, uh, coarse rod has a certain amount of slop, as we'll say. So you, you may get lucky and it may work. Uh, if not, you may have to either try to machine the face of this nut or replace it with a wooden one uh, that you can more easily machine. You can make you a, 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 a nut easily by buying an appropriate size uh, a bolt, cutting some slots in it, using that to, to tap the hole. You then cut off a, a shorter piece, wrap it in this heavy uh, copper wire so you can clamp it in your uh, chuck jaws and then you can thread this on on in order to face that side off um, and then use use that instead of this nut to uh, actually have this register against just like you would on a uh, a chuck on your on your spindle so it'll it'll run true so that's that's a possibility. The other challenge is these threads are cut so sloppily they're not even cut they're pressed in I think in the in the process that uh, there there is some slop and it's fairly soft metal so the second challenge is you got if you have some slop between the front nut and the second nut the back nut you you may have to figure out some way to take up some slack and uh, that or that slop and one way is to uh, get this where you can turn it, and pinch it a little bit on one side with a, a screw, and there's there's other possibilities. But that is a ch uh, another challenge to making it work for you. Even with a certain amount of uh, uh, slop, you can still cut uh, acceptable threads as long as long as it's not excessive. Now, when I made this, and I say all the details of this are in that article, I use one quarter inch uh, coarse rod because it. It made the math easy on setting up this calibration. It's fairly expensive. You can use uh, T-nuts uh, to, to set that up. There are other examples, and I'll show some pictures of, uh, here, that where people had other materials available to them and, and made something maybe a little stronger, maybe a little better. Uh, if they had to procure the materials, it would be a lot more expensive, such as one that has a, a much larger, possibly a three-quarter inch uh, brass, brass rod. Some of them use... Uh, 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 larger, uh, larger rods. Some of them are not even calibrated, so uh, it's a little bit more trial and error getting this uh, to, to piece to uh, move in. Now, one example uh, that that can work instead of building this cross slide device, if you have one on hand, uh, is a small, inexpensive XY vice, four inch or five inch. If you go out to buy one, you're beginning to run your costs up. Uh, but they're available from Harbor Freight and other inexpensive uh, eBay uh, at, at relatively co low cost. You get what you pay for, and, and they've got machining problems with them in, in terms of tolerance and, and, and slop. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's another way. You put a nut on each end, and you put it in that vise and clamp it down, and you can go laterally and, and forward with it that crosswise device is shown in the uh, in the picture. And some threading jigs actually use a, a router and are completely self-contained and the router runs the 60 degree uh, cutter. So you can see this making a jig is not for the faint of heart. You can see how those uh, uh, costs start start rising up uh, uh, fairly fairly quickly. When you go to buying the parts, you may have to buy uh, nuts in, in, in lots of 20 or 25. Uh, when you go to buy the coarse rod, you're going to have to buy pieces longer than you actually need. Uh, you've got shipping charges involved with, with ordering some of this material, including the uh, uh, Penn State uh, spindle adapters. Uh, you can cut the, certainly cut those costs. If you and a buddy go in together and, and spread that overhead, you can cut your costs. Uh, when I started this project, I worked with two other uh, wood turning uh, friends of mine that we carpooled a lot of meetings together and we thought it would be a fun project. 
Uh, unfortunately, uh, let me tell you a little story about George Washington's comment on staff. He says, what one person can do well, two people can do less well, and three can scarcely do it all. And although everybody brought something to the table, the problem is it increased the complexity and, and the length of time. Eighteen months after we started, I finally got a little frustrated and, and, and uh, got all my parts and, and assembled it and, and got on with it. And uh, Otherwise, we weren't ever going to finish the finish the project. Uh, so that, that is a consideration. So after I used this one a while, I never really was uh, real happy with it. And actually, uh, this soft zinc-coated thread seized up on me on my 16 threads branch, and it rendered this one useless, even though I had interchangeable arbors. This one could go on here. It still works with a 10 threads branch. So let's let's talk about some of the options on buying them commercially. I've put the vendor source for the three uh, main models that I'm familiar with uh, under in the description for this video. Uh, the Bonnie Klein, which was one of the first ones on the market, is no longer available unless you find one used, but it's no longer available uh, new. Uh, Chefware Kits uh, makes this model, and you can get it with interchangeable uh, uh, lead screws for different size size threads. Uh, they've got a new model that just came out where this uh, it's machined out of an aluminum. Uh, I haven't seen that one yet, but I'm sure it's going to be uh, uh, probably even better than this one. Uh, this one is very similar to the Simon Hope uh, jig made in the UK. One of the advantages of this particular style where it mounts on the banjo is that it's you can easily adapt it to another lathe by getting another another post and the posts are uh, quickly interchanged so if you do it on different sizes size lathes or you're you're a demonstrator uh, this is a very very nice feature in, indeed uh, when you go to check the threads I like this model and that you just swing this away uh, if you use the uh, Baxter uh, threading master that mounts it's a little easier. You know it's going to be lined up parallel, but when you go to check your threads, it, you have to have a uh, registration block mounted and slide the jig away, which is uh, just a little bit more more effort. But they they both accomplish that. They all accomplish the the job, and they all have their various pros and cons. The first consideration, if you're going to make one, is what size threads per inch. If you're making larger boxes like this acorn, where uh, the size of the box is say two and a half to, to, to three inches, maybe a little bit larger. I would recommend the 10 threads per inch. It will cut most any domestic wood. The coarser thread is a little bit uh, stronger and uh, it will cut more easily in a wider variety of the domestic woods we have around in the United States. And that could include oak and cherry as well as soft maple. Uh, woods that are, frankly, you could not uh, uh, make threads with a hand thread chaser. If you're primarily doing uh, smaller boxes, more in the two inch category, such as maybe this smaller acorn. I've got too many threads on it, I should have taken some of the threads off. Uh, something like this, or an even smaller box, say a two inch box where uh, make it, you make it out of exotic woods that you typically buy in two by two inch uh, blanks, then then the 16 threads per inch is a better fit. You put 10 threads per inch on a box this small and it starts looking rather rather coarse and um, um, in, industrial, I guess, is, is the, 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 this expression I'm looking for. Details on actually using this jig are outside the scope of this video. Maybe we can defer that. If there's any interest in that, please uh, leave a, a comment uh, below. But if you can't afford to uh, uh, buy one or make one, you know, you still got the option of, of buying a, a set of hand thread chasers, and if I was going to uh, do that, I would buy the 16 threads branch. Uh, that is the, the easiest set to learn how to use, and is probably the, the best general, uh, general of the road uh, uh, size, if I had to pick one size. If you have any thoughts on this, this topic, please post them below. And I gotta tell you, I really enjoy hand thread chasing and find it very satisfying, actually more so than using a jig. And I want to give a shout out to Sam Angelo, the Wyoming wood turner, for all his hand thread chasing videos that helped me in the past. Y'all stay safe. Come back here.